Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 0363659, 0703 768118. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. You cannot run away from the influence of, the, of your partner in marriage. Whosoever he or she is, we put an indelible mark on you and your journey in life. We shall therefore, through this seminar, trust the Lord to bring us wisdom with grace of obedience on this critical matter of marriage, even as one born of God, with an embedded capacity of a more than conqueror. This seminar shall be in three sections, taking to consideration both the unmarried and married among us. We will, at some intervals, take practical inputs from some couples to drive home the principles of and practice in marriage as revealed in the Holy Scriptures. May the Lord open your heart to comprehend eternal truths and secure your home in conquest. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, that's the introduction. And I would just like for you to note uh, just one thing there as we move on. It is that you cannot run away from the influence of your partner in marriage. Now, that king that was mentioned in that second king, chapter 8, verse 25 to 27, it is as if the evil he did was in association, was in relationship to the woman he married. The Bible says he did evil in the sight of the Lord, for he was the son-in-law of Ahab. He married the granddaughter of Ahab, and you know that uh, the, the, the wife of Ahab, Ahab was Jezebel. So it had influence on him that perhaps he would have been a good man, he would have been a good king with a clean and clear testimony before God for except for the woman that he joined himself with in marriage. So you have to be very careful uh, as you tread this very critical path of life. Now we are moving to the section one straight away because of our time. And section one is dealing with the foundation of a more than conqueror's marriage. The foundation of a more than conqueror's marriage. We will read scriptures that are there very, very quickly. Uh, Psalm 11, verse 3, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 14, Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 to 8 and Matthew 7, 24 to 27. I will read the first scripture. Um, Psalm 11, verse 3. Psalm 11, verse 3 says, all right, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? We'll take 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 10 to 14. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, a straw, 
everyone's work will become clear for the day we declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. It will receive a reward. Now, Matthew 19, verse 4 to 8. And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then, they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. They said to him, Why did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. The last passage. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Matthew chapter 7, 24 to 27. 27. Therefore, whoever hear these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat, beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded. But everyone who hears these things of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built it on the rock, and the rain descended, the flood came, and the wind blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was the fall. Now, all these passages that we have read, they are pointers to the fact of foundation. And uh, the foundation of marriage uh, is God himself. Uh, the Bible says, he who made them at the beginning, made them male and female. There is a beginning, or there was a beginning of marriage, which was God. And Jesus Christ restated that as he was responding to the Pharisees when he particularly said, in the beginning, it was not so. So when we talk of marriage, we can't be speaking about the marriage of a more than a conqueror without talking about the foundation. That is the reason why we have read all those uh, scriptural passages in order to drive home the fact that you can't enter into marriage without laying a proper foundation and proper foundation must be as it was in the beginning. The strength, stability, and sustainability of a building depends largely on its foundation. The ability of a structure to withstand inevitable stress from natural phenomena of life is inherent basically in its foundation. Marriage is a building subject to stress that the natural environment inflict from time to time. It is therefore wise and expedient that we pay due and diligent attention to the foundation laying of, uh, that is the beginning of our marital relationship. For any marriage to succeed, be that of, to be that of a mere modern conquerors, it must follow divine principles and concepts as God established it right from the beginning. Actually, the neglect of principles as given by God is the reason for the many struggles and troubles several people are going through with devastating experiences in their marriages. A lot of potential more than conquerors have their lives trashed, their dreams shattered, and vision dimmed because they took things for granted when they got to this critical junction of marriage. They went in a way that seemed right in their eyes, defiance to divine guidance, and now they are met with death rather than life, wallowing in regret of hastiness and arrogance that characterized their lives while making choice 
of marriage partner. I think that is clear enough. If our marriage will be that of a more than the conqueror, it must take into consideration a solid foundation, a solid foundation. The strength of a home uh, largely depends on the foundation that you give it from the very beginning. And if you must be a more than conqueror, uh, you cannot neglect your marriage. You can't be careless about it. You can't be negligent. You can say, is it not just to marry? It's not just to marry. In a local wisdom, he said, there is more behind six than seven. That is, the figure, the number behind six is more than seven. You have plenty, eight, nine, ten, and so on and so forth. So you can say, let me just marry. It will be all right. It won't be all right when it doesn't follow what it was at the beginning. Uh, so to avoid regrets, to avoid uh, uh, um, the problem that several people have found themselves in marriage, um, we, we now look at the basic components of a healthy and sustainable foundation for a more than conqueror's marriage. Uh, in building, uh, builders, engineers, they deal with specifications. And if there is anywhere, uh, any reasonable builder, any reasonable engineer, we not allow compromise is at the foundation level. And that's why we want to look at what are the basic components, what are the things that guarantee a healthy and sustainable foundation for your marriage to be that of a more than conqueror's marriage. Number one, marriage is God's idea and initiative. It began with God. Can you please note that? Marriage began with God. Marriage is older than any other culture. Marriage is older than any tradition. Please, for your information, than any profession. So if your marriage would be that of more than the conquerors, it must begin with God. You must allow God to initiate it. It can't be your own idea because it was never the man's idea right from the beginning. Uh, it began with God. It also implies that you can't begin marriage ignoring God. You can't begin marriage uh, neglecting God without God deliberate input and without God being where he ought to be uh, in your marriage, which is he must be at the very beginning of it. Praise the Lord. What is the second point? Marriage was for the man and woman created in his image. You remember that Genesis 1.26, God said, uh, let us make man in our own image after our likeness that they may have dominion over the fish of the, uh, of the water, over the birds of the air, and all of that. Now, but what we are bringing out from that concerning marriage is that the first man that God gave marriage to was a man and a woman in the image of God. Now, the implication of that actually is that it takes the image of God in a man on earth to prosper in the marriage institution which God himself uh, set up. So if a man, a woman, is not in the image of God, there will be struggle. There will be stress in their relationship. Uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, uh, it has come to us in the course of this meeting. He said, all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. That was one thing that happened when man sinned. Men came short. He became unable. Uh, he now lacked capacity to do or be, first to be whom God wanted him to be and to do what God wanted him to do. And since God, it is God, it was God who instituted marriage and he instituted it for the man in his image, except you carry the image of God, which we lost in Adam, but which Jesus had come back to give to us, except a man in Christ, he can never be well without marriage. 
except a woman in Christ. Please note it. It can never be well without marriage. Number three, marriage was instituted for God's pleasure. Marriage was instituted for God's pleasure. And marriage was not for our own pleasure. That Genesis 1, 26, 28, talking about how God said, let's make man. Because man himself, the old man, the total man, was not for himself. He was created for God. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou art created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and were created. So man and all that man will be, man and all that man will do, including his marriage, was for God's pleasure. So we cannot enter into marriage uh, for our own pleasure. First Corinthians 6, 19 to 20 talks about, do you not know? that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and so on and so on. He said, you are not your own. You are not your own. So, beloved young people, I want you to know that you are not your own, either by creation or by redemption. You are not your own. And so you can't do anything uh, pleasing to God, and your marriage cannot be pleasing to God, if you are not entering into it for his pleasure, you are not your own. The first man and woman on earth with whom marriage began. No, no, sorry. I'm reading under three now. Man in total, including his marriage, was originally made for God's purpose and pleasure. It was made for God's delight and satisfaction on earth. Your partner in marriage is a favor and equally a trust from God. You remember Proverbs 18, 22 says, uh, he who finds a wife has found a good thing and he has received favor from God. Now, what does that mean? Your wife is a favor from God. So you can't handle her anyhow, but not many young people understand it. Not many young people want to get into marriage. Not many people, including the older ones who have even got into marriage, understand it. They don't understand that it is God who had favored them with a wife. And a wife has also not understood that getting into marriage, I am going into the life of my husband as a favor from God unto his life. So whether you are a man or you are a woman, that marriage is not for you. Actually, you are holding the man, you are holding the woman in trust. And God is going to be asking you, what do you do with the man I, I, I sent you to? And what do you do with the woman I brought to you? Praise the Lord. Number four, the concept of male and female, male and female. Genesis 127 confirms that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female. Male and female, he created them. Uh, Jesus retreated it as we have read in Matthew uh, 19 verse four. I would like for us to read uh, Leviticus 18, 22 and 23. Uh, and 1 Corinthians 6, 9. There is a reason why we are bringing that and we want to read uh, those scriptures. Our sister will read Leviticus uh, 18, verse 22 to 23. I will read 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22 to 23. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination nor shall you mate with any animal to defile yourself with it, nor shall any woman stand before an animal to mate with it. It is perversion. Right. And so that nobody will say, but that is the Old Testament. I am of the New Testament. I am a New Testament believer. I am in the dispensation of grace. Now, 
we saw that First um, Corinthians six nine says the same thing. It said, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. But the one I want you to take note is it says, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor revirers, nor extortioners, we inherit the kingdom of God. So, and marriage actually in the purpose of God is for his kingdom on the earth. So if your marriage will be a marriage that pleases God and satisfies his heart here on earth, excuse me, it must be the marriage of a male and a female. Not male and male, not female and female. Now, this is very important because of the aberration that has entered into the marriage institution. Sad enough that church has, you know, uh, embraced it and is spreading like white fire. But we are noting that if you are going to be a more than the conqueror, your marriage cannot follow that order because it was not so at the beginning. That was part of the weed that the enemy sowed. So no marriage can be victorious and no one in marriage can be a more than conqueror without a proper understanding and application of this concept. The concept of male and female implies basic design differences that must be well understood by partners coming into or already in marriage. The husband is a male. That looks like we know, but we must know. And that the wife is a female. The meaning of that is that a woman is not a male. So when you want to marry, you must know that that the makeup of a woman is not your makeup. The emotional uh, response of a woman is not like that of a man. We must note that. Each of them is unique in makeups, reactions, responses, emotion exp expression, and thought pattern. These basic design differences make marriage contributory and participatory. Marriage as instituted by God is not male and male or female and female. Such aberration that people now clamor for in different society is a perversion. And I will also call it a gross assault against divine wisdom. Number five, marriage is a permanent bonding between a man and his wife while they are both alive. Uh, we must take the scriptures there, particularly uh, Romans chapter 7, uh, verse 2 to 3, and then Malachi 2, 16. Romans 7, verse 2 to 3. Our sister will read that. I will read Malachi uh, 2, 16. Romans chapter 7, verse 2 to 3. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she's released from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband lives, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. For if her husband dies, she's free from that law so that she's no adulteress though she has married another man. Malachi 2.16 says, For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce, for it covers one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Now, we deliberately read these two passages because of the rate at which divorce is growing all around the globe now. And it's looking acceptable. But we are noting that the foundation of a more than conqueror's marriage does not give room for divorce. And that's the reason why you must be careful before you say, I do. You must note that once you enter, you have entered. Whatever you find there is your own. You can say, mm, I didn't know that this is how you are. 
I think we have to do something about it and call it quit. No. Once you are married, you are married. This must be factored into the reasoning of anyone who intends to have a more than conqueror's marriage. Jesus responding to the excuse of the Pharisees in favor of divorce was very emphatic. He says, in the beginning, it was not so. Marriage is not something you jump into unadvisedly just to satisfy selfish desire, meet society expectation, or in response to family pressure. You need divine leading before you say, I do, and even thereafter. Divorce, polygamy, that is married to one, uh, more than one wife, polyandry, married to more than one husband, are aberrations of the only institution of marriage. And there is another, uh, uh, what do I call it? One that is going on now, uh, particularly in the Western world, partnership. You see a man and a woman, they are together. They have not gone into holy matrimony. Nobody weathered them. And they are moving together as couple. Uh, they, are, they are having children. And it's becoming uh, a, the acceptable a, all around now. Excuse me. That is not marriage as God intended it from the beginning. Number six, marriage as a help for the man. Uh, particularly, God spoke in uh, Genesis chapter 2 and uh, said, It was not, verse 18 said, It was not good that the man should be alone. I will make for him a helpmate. And what helpmate? It is so that man will have a help to help him in the discharge of his creation responsibility. Uh, Ephesians 2 10 talks about the works that God has created for us, he has, you know, beforehand ordained, uh, except for where his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in. There is a work. There is a purpose of God for your life as a man. And so God brings the woman into your life to help you. Woman, sisters who want to marry, I think I need to say this. May you understand that you are coming into the life of that man as a help, not as a load. As a help, not as a burden. Uh, you know, uh, there is a song we, that is sung here, he go, he go carry my load. Now, that song right there is talking about God. It's not talking about man becoming the carrier of your load. I met a sister many years back. Uh, she was coming to me for you know, counseling on issue of marriage. And God said, when she comes, ask her, why did she want to marry? Does she want to marry? So I asked sister, why do you want to marry? I said, ah, ah, brother, why are you asking? I want to marry now. She was already of age. I said, why do you want to marry? I didn't say God said I should ask you. I said, why do you want to marry? He said, you know, at least when you marry, you have, you have somebody to help you carry your body. God said, do you see the problem? A woman that I want to send as a body bearer, as a body lifter, as a head, she wants to go to hard body onto that man. Every man, every woman who is coming to marriage must note that. God created man with a definite purpose in mind to have dominion over other creations on earth. He was given the task to tend the garden and keep it. The woman, that is the wife, was in response to a need in the man who was already in God's assignment. So brother, let me ask you, you want a wife, but what are you doing for God? What are you doing for God? What should justify your request before God? Even as you are praying, I need a wife, God is saying, for what? A man that has not discovered divine purpose, why should I give him a helpmate? And anyone who is not in assignment for God, who is not walking first with God and, you know, having an assignment for God. Sister, if you marry such a man, you are in trouble because he will not appreciate you. He will not know the essence of a woman coming from God into his life. Um, she was not an idle man. No, no, she was not for an idle man. It takes a man living for God's pleasure 
and purpose to properly appreciate genuinely embraced, lovingly welcomed, tenderly handled, and effectively utilized, that is, graciously made space for the gift of a wife from God. Number seven, marriage is for partnership, is for companionship. The husband and wife in marriage are partner one of another in life and for life. Please note it. Note in life, what does meaning of that? Here on earth. You won't need marriage in heaven. But the way you handle your marriage may determine where you will go in eternity. So it is for life, in life, and for life. A partner is a part owner, which connotes uh, roles and responsibility in the common goal of the partnership. God recognizes honors and give premium to this the moment a marriage is contracted between a man and his wife. Each partner must be faithful to the partnership oath that is the marriage vows taken at inception. Because marriage is a partnership that gives a legal ownership of your life to your partner, you cannot be rash in choice of marriage partner or take unilateral decision while you're already married. You can't say, eh, well, whether she likes it or not, I, this is what I want to do, and you're already married. No, she has a part in every aspect of your life. And before you marry, know that the woman you are going to marry will become a, an owner of your life. So be careful of who you go in with. Marriage is not for competition. Please note that. You marry to complement your partner, enhance him or her as you both work to fulfill divine purpose on earth. Praise the Lord. Uh, finally, on the issue of basic component, uh, please note that the time we have cannot exhaust the, the matters. We are just giving them like bullet points, uh, trusting the Lord that since you have the uh, outline with you, you will look for time to go through them again. Marriage is meant to produce godly offspring. Marriage is given to fulfill a man's creation purpose to fill the earth and subdue it. God desired that every marriage will raise for him godly children that will replenish the earth, fill it, and perpetrate his agenda. This offspring is not limited to biological children. It includes spiritual children, lives that your marriage is raising for the kingdom of God on earth. Another dimension of godly offspring is godliness flowing by your life as a husband or wife and through your own into your community, bringing people around you into consciousness of godly living, particularly in this perverse generation. Uh, beloved, whether you are married now or you are yet to marry, please put that in mind. A marriage that is not fulfilling this is a failure. A marriage that build houses, have chains of businesses, and all other earthly things, but you are not giving God godly offspring. Godliness is not oozing out, flowing out of your own into your community. Uh, people see you as couple and they are not desiring God and wanting to follow God. That marriage is already a failure. For at the beginning, when God uh, made man, he said he, he made them one. For what? He said that he seeks godly offspring. Praise the name of Jesus. Now we move very quickly to section two. Choosing a more than conqueror's marriage partner. Uh, please can you read the introduction very quickly of that and then. Having established the fact of marriage being an institution ordained, instituted, and given to man by God as a help and means of fulfilling godly purpose on the earth. We will now take time to understand the way and manner every young person seeking to have a more than conqueror marriage must go. It is imperative to know from the onset that 
says marriage is of God and originally from him, he has the safety manual that anyone seeking to have a concrete marriage must have and understand. God has not left us without sufficient guidance on every step towards having a more than concrete marital relationship. Before we proceed, hear the counsel of God and be guided by it. Galatians 6, 7 to, 4 from, 7 to 8 from Living Bible. Don't be misled. Remember that you can't ignore God and get away with it. A man will always reap just the kind of crop he sows. If he sows to please his own wrong desires, he will be planting seeds of evil and he will surely reap a harvest of spiritual decay and death. But if he plants the good things of the Spirit, he will reap the everlasting life that the Holy Spirit gives him. That's it. Don't be misled. What you sow, you will reap. So that must be in your mind as we go on with uh, how do you get a marriage partner? that we follow you in your journey as a more than conqueror partner. Now, it takes two to tangle. And yesterday when our brother was talking about discipleship and he talks it as a yoke, let me also say to you that marriage is a yoke. And you don't yoke uh, two unlike animals. So two unlike people cannot yoke together. Don't be misled. So the first person asks, who must your more than conqueror's marriage partner be? Is that he or she must be born again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, young people, hear that from Jesus again. Except a man, including a woman, be born again, he cannot see. The kingdom of God. Verse 5 says, He cannot enter the kingdom of God. 6 says, For that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So if the person you want to marry is not born of God into the kingdom of God, excuse me, he can't see your journey. You say you are born again and you want to walk in the kingdom of God and fulfill purpose for the kingdom of God. But you are bringing an unequal person to yoke with. He can't see it or he doesn't have capacity to see it. You will shout, 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 shout. You will cry, 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 cry. He can't see it because your cry on a dog does not change that dog to a goat. That which is born goat, now goat. That which is born dog, is a dog. Don't be a sheep and you want to marry a dog or you want to marry a goat. You know the way sheep behaves. You, will, you know the way goat behaves. A person will behave according to who is in him, according to the nature that is in him. So your marriage partner must be born again. Number two, your marriage partner must be an established and growing Christian. He must be an established and growing Christian. Don't marry a baby. Even though if he is born again, how mature is he? How mature is she? Don't marry a baby Christian who is still looking for milk. You know a baby cannot tow, cannot carry heavy load. And marriage the challenges that comes in marriage is not for baby. You need a measure of strength, spiritual inner strength, to be able to bear issues of marriage. Please note that your partner, if he will walk with you, follow you in your journey of a more than conqueror, must not be a baby. Now listen, when you are working with a baby that cannot walk well, that cannot walk fast, your journey is slow down. You may be forced at some point when you get to some difficult terrain to carry that baby. He can't jump. 
He can't cross ditches. You will have to carry. Don't marry a man that you will be the one to be towing, to be carrying him when challenges come. Don't marry a woman that you will be the one to be carrying her when challenges come because she has no strength to work on her own. Number three, uh, your marriage partner must be weaned from parents and relations. Uh, Genesis 224, please read it very quickly. And uh, Matthew 12, 47 to 50. I'm going to read that very, very Genesis quickly. Genesis 224. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Matthew 12, 7 to 50. Uh, it reads, Then one said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak with you. But he answered and said to the one who told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciple and said, Ye are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. May the Lord grant us understanding that when you marry a man who is still uh, mother's, uh, what do you call it now? Uh, who is still in his mother's breast. Uh, if you marry a woman who is still in her mother's breast, who has not weaned herself, uh, use mama baby and uh, uh, every small thing. Uh, mama, mama, I don't know. I have to go and tell my mother. I have to go and tell my father. Uh, you know, there will be a problem uh, in such a home. Praise the Lord. Now, how do you get uh, the or make the choice of a more than conqueror marriage? Uh, please, number one. Have your heart well disposed towards God and his purpose for your life. Number two, don't have idols. Idols of it must be short, it must be, it must be tall, it must be a bright complexion, it must come from so, it must come from that place, it must have this car, it must have that other one, and so on. Don't have idols in your heart. Number three, sleep. That is rest, allow God. It is God who said that we make. Allow him to make. Anxiety, worries, I think I will read the comment on that, that cannot help you. Don't be restless as you seek to have a more than conqueror's marriage. Worry will lead you into error. Don't keep going here and there, looking around in every direction for a partner. Rather, as a brother, learn to lift up your eyes to the Lord, for only him, for only from him can your help wife come to you. No parading or advertising yourself to the brother. Don't go and be a member of a school fellowship or church just because you want a brother to see you. It will be your honor if the brother receives you from the Lord. What's the next thing? Wait on the Lord. He will come. He who will come shall surely come. Wait on the Lord. Number The last one, learn to hear and recognize the voice of God. And how does God speak? In our witness. He speaks through dreams, through vision, through prophecy, testimonies and counsel of other brethren. He speaks through scriptures. He also speaks through godly counsel. Now, we're going to stop at this point as we will bring in uh, two young couples uh, who will bring in some uh, personal uh, experience as they came into marriage. Uh, for today, we have our brother, uh, uh, when we and the and our sister the Lee, the Liwe uh, Mbatata uh, from Malawi, and we also have a brother and our sister um, Philip and Lorena Woli uh, here in Liberia. They are sitting right beside us here. Uh, Philip and Lorena, you are welcome. All right. Uh, what of the Brother and sister from Malawi. All right, all right. So our sister is going to ask them a few questions and then they will be responding very quickly. Thank you.
Okay, you are welcome, uh, Brother Chimwewe. Our time is fast spent. Very quickly, can you tell us how your marriage began? Your right, marriage you relationship. So, uh, thank you so much. Uh, so basically, uh, my uh, marriage relationship began almost through prayer and also through the help, uh, through discipleship. So we were praying uh, through and later on, uh, after um, uh, seeing the leading of the Lord, I went to ask for uh, counsel from uh, my disciple and then being given a go ahead. Because of time, I'll just share one personal uh, uh, encounter that I had uh, because then um, we were taught to say it's not a try and error. Uh, when you are entering into a marriage, it's not a try and error. We were also taught uh, that uh, you always have to define the relationship if you are relating with the sisters. We were also taught that, you know, it's a process of a sleep and that we have to die to our own self. So when the Lord led me to Deliwe, I remember that time that there was a little bit of resistance from my heart. And uh, it was later on when I had an encounter when I was reading 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14 to 15, that the Lord was now telling me to say, uh, you know, the love of God compels us for once he, he died for us, not that we live to ourselves, but we live to him. And it was through then that the Lord was assuring me to say, no, uh, this is my leading. Uh, I can't give you a stone, you know, from Matthew 7. Uh, I can't give you a stone. She is the one that I'm giving you. And then later on, after that struggle, I found peace when I accepted the will of the Lord. And uh, I proposed. And after three months, uh, she came back to me to say, thank you so much. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's good. That's Sister Deliwe, now can I ask you, did you seek for guidance as you perceive that God was sending you to Brother Chimbaba's life? Yes, I did. For me, it was a bit different. Even when he was coming to me, I was a, a born again Christian, but I did not know much about um, discipleship. So he's the one, the first thing that he did, he introduced me to his disciple. So that was a, a, a big change in my life because that's when we started being guided uh, through as to what the word of God says about courtship what my role is in this relationship. I was also asked that question to say, why do you want to get married? And that was a hard question for me to answer then, but through discipleship, I came to know and understand to say that this is not just about me uh, being at the age that I can get married, but then in all this, there has to be the will of God. And I, that was of great help for me through discipleship, I came to know all that. Thank God for that. Now, let me quickly ask Brother Chingwewe again. Did you have any struggle to go along with uh, Sister Deliwe? I did. I think uh, this. And how did you I overcome had, the struggle? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I did uh, have a struggle in, in marrying our thoughts. Uh, since we we're coming from different backgrounds and the way she was raised, uh, the way I was raised. Uh, in discipleship, we're having struggle. I remember at one point, packing up messages, giving her to say, listen to these messages, they will defy you. And after a week, I checked up on her. She says, no, I haven't even gone through any message because the messages are very long. And I remember at one point as well, uh, when we had a meeting, she, she loves basketball. She was a basketball player. And then she went for a trip. Yet I had invited her to 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 come for the, the, the classes. So I was mad. And actually, I went to my disciple to say, ah, no, I think I'm done with this uh, <laughs> uh, lady. And I was, I, I thought he would welcome me to say, ah, you know, please go ahead. But he said, no, you remember we pray and the Lord led us into this uh, relationship. So let's still pray and see uh, what the Lord will say. And by God's grace, I remember going home right. and I was... So <laughs> oh, that's good. You were led, you were guided. Now let me move to Brother Philip and Sister Lorena from Liberia. Uh, Sister Lorena, can I ask you, uh, as we listen to the concept of male and female, how have you come to term in accepting Philip as your husband? 
knowing that there are differences in your makeups quickly. Thank you, Ma. So coming to that, right from the beginning, since I came this to this discipleship, I've just come to know that the male and the female, we are separate individuals. And God has deposited in us genuine and unique attributions that has great contribution to our marriage. So when we first came together, and there were some things about him that sometimes were like put me off, like, ah, is this, is this, is this the man that 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 God has given me? Is this a good plan that he has for me? But then when I now look at it again, either from that uh, 2911, that says all um, the, the thoughts of God for our lives they are good and they are his plans for all are perfect. They are not to take us to, you know, um, you know not, to, not to give us evil, but to take us to an expected end. So I just got to know that this man that God has given me, he is part of God's good plan for him. And whatever his differences, with the help of God, since it is him that have brought him to me, I can always go back to him, you know, to help me to cope with his, you know, individual attitude and his differences. And that has just been the way that God has helped me, knowing that he is God's good gift. That's good. You can always go back, you can always go back to the master of marriage, the author of marriage. Thank you very much. Now, Brother Philip, you are a kissy man, and your wife is a Basa woman. You are not from the same tribe. How did you, were you able to accept the differences and marry yourself together with Sister Lorena? All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I see it to be uh, exactly the help of God. I know that uh, my decision firstly to get married to Sister Lorena uh, has been an uh, engineer from the very onset, blessed by God. So, uh, coming to that, uh, there is a passage in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, that says, Having died to, uh, having died with Christ from the basic principles of uh, the world, why then, why living in the world, do you subject yourself uh, to these principles? Mm -hmm. So, uh, because of that, I knew now that I had an entirely new life altogether. So I knew that uh, regulations and traditions uh, would not be something that would actually stop the purpose of God for me. So I actually yielded my life and I uh, so, uh, released myself that whatever is the will of God for me in marriage, I will accept. So that was how I was freely able to accept uh, Sis Lorena. Uh, as my wife from God. Right. Thank you so much. Now we will have to stop at this point. Uh, now, this impute that has come to us from Malawi and from here in Liberia, now it's just to, if you had followed the brethren as they shared, three things came out very quick, out very carefully. Uh, the brother from Malawi said, I began with prayer. And when you began with prayer, it means you are beginning with God. Very important. And even after there was a leading, he sought divine guidance. There was difference. There were some things that would like put off. Guidance in discipleship, again, was used of God to help him and help them to where they are now. Now, our brother here in Liberia and our sister, they also talk about scripture. Did you see the two of them mentioning scriptures, um, Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, the other scripture also mentioned, is very important. Very important that you know the word of God because that is the, the solid rock on which you can walk and have your marriage as a marriage of the more than conquerors. We'll stop at this point to pray. Uh, we trust God that he will push us forward tomorrow. Shall we pray together? Blessed Redeemer, we are grateful to you for this uh, short input. And this is just to draw out the young people uh, onto the fact that there is a marriage as of the beginning. 
because marriage is very crucial in their journey as a more than I mean as the more than conquerors and we do not wish just as you don't that the enemy we who we lay ambush we don't wish that he catches them at this point so lord we pray that you will bless this that we have done today and cause it to bring your pleasure in jesus name we have prayed amen